Sikian Lee, standing outside on a very, very snowy day outside a house on the east side of Toronto with a man who makes a living out of encountering urban wildlife. Brad Gates is the owner and the president of Gates Wildlife Control, and he's been in the humane wildlife removal and prevention business for nearly 28 years. Hey, thanks for meeting me here today, Brad. Not a problem at all. I understand you got a call, and I came over as quick as I could. What the heck's going on here today? Well, the homeowner's losing sleep because there's an animal living in the walls and in the attic of the, this house. We just uh, set up the ladder at the side of the house, so we're doing an inspection now to determine how many points of entry there might be and what species of animal we might be dealing with. Let's go talk to her. Okay. Hi. Hi. Oh, there's a dog. That's not a wild animal. That's a domesticated animal. That's Jordan. Hi, Jordan. He's a big, goofy, golden retriever, and he loves everybody. <laughs> so. And you are the woman who phoned Brad and company. What was going on with you? Well, for the past couple of nights, I noticed that there's been a bit of partying going on in my attic, and it sounded like either really big squirrels or small raccoons, it's hard to tell, but there was a lot of skittering, scattering, and I have to admit, when you wake up in the middle of the night and you hear this scratching and chewing, and it sounds like they're in the room with you, and it, it, it kind of freaked me out a bit, and then I thought, no, they're in behind the wall, I'm sure, but it's very disconcerting because you do start thinking, oh my gosh, what are they, and where are they, and, and what damage are they doing? I know they can be very destructive. And as much as I think they're very cute, um, I really don't want them in the house. I love them outside. <laughs> well, let's hope that uh, Brad can resolve this. Thanks okay. a lot. Thank you. Uh, Brad, um, she has no idea what's in there. No, and that's very common. Unless they see the animal on the outside, they generally don't know what species they're dealing with. So, I mean, how did you get into this line of work? I started off as a youngster, just loving urban wildlife. And then as time went on, I was able to get a, a, a baby raccoon as a pet. As a pet? How did that happen? Well, there was a company that did this type of work but didn't do it correctly, and they separated the mother from the babies, and he had the babies and was looking for people to adopt them. So I read in the Scarborough Mirror about this, and I was able to get uh, one of the babies to raise. It was blind at the time, just very young. His eyes hadn't opened just yet, and I raised it to adulthood and then eventually released it. I guess you found it by the wrong way of handling the raccoon, so did you want to do the right way? Exactly. When we first started our, our business, the removal procedure was to trap and relocate wildlife many kilometers away from where it was captured. We now realize that an animal's best chance of survival is to release it where it's familiar with other additional sources of shelter and food. They have a very good chance of surviving uh, when we release them on site. Right. Can you tell me about a time when an animal you came to deal with taught you a lesson? It was a raccoon removal in a garage. I went into the garage, shut the garage door behind me because I wanted to capture the animal. As the animal climbed down out of the rafters, it reached over and pushed the electric garage door opener, and the door opened up behind me, and I was completely startled. And then the raccoon jumped to the floor and ran out through the garage. So it taught me that raccoons are very, very intelligent, and they learn from their successes. And maybe the first time this raccoon did this, it was completely by accident, but then it realized that there was a benefit in pushing that button, and that allowed it to come and go. You're not just dealing with stupid animals here. They're actually quite wily and know how to operate electrical doors. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So there's not a day that goes by that we don't learn something from them. So what's one of your most memorable jobs in your 28-year career? Probably the most interesting and exciting job that we had to do was Japanese snow monkeys had escaped the private zoo in St. Catharines and one of the young monkeys had bit a child. So the Ministry of Health had called us and asked us to come out and capture the monkeys. Um, having never dealt with monkeys before, I called Mr. Ferguson, who had them on his property from time to time, for advice on how we might capture them. He suggested that I should come out and try to catch the female now because she was in heat. For the life of me, I couldn't understand
understand why her being in heat would help me capture the, this adult female. And he says, you don't understand. When she goes into heat, she wants to mate with me. So she becomes my constant companion. She's on my shoulders. She's in my arms. She's, she's grooming my hair. And it would make it easier because she's so close rather than other times of the year. So we went out there. It took us about eight hours, but we were successful in catching um, the mother uh, snow monkey and her two babies. We, once we caught her, we used her as kind of bait to lure in the babies, and we were able to catch them, and they went off to the Orno Zoo after that. Holy smokes, so you had to flirt with the monkeys. <laughs> exactly. Well, you've told us about the animal factor. What about the human factor? I mean, how have you seen them freak out in the face of wildlife in their home? The one that really stands out in my mind was the science teacher that had raccoons in his attic, and he just happened to have a 22 rifle, and when he proceeded to take me up into his bedroom where he was hearing the animals, he showed me um, six bullet holes in his ceiling where he tried to track the animal and, and shoot it as it walked across the ceiling. Fortunately, he didn't hit the animal. What did you think? Uh, I was shocked that, that someone would uh, take matters into their own hands like that, but I can also sympathize that to be sleep deprived it can be a terrible thing and sometimes we don't think rationally when we do things like that um, you went a bit a loco <laughs> he did go a little bit loco and uh, as a result he caused damage to his house but we were successful in removing the animal he was grateful for that but he also had to have roof repair because the bullets went right to his shingles and caused leaks into his house oh man well I had a run in with a raccoon actually raccoons in my basement and I tried to drive them out with rock and roll music and then I, I tried luring them with food and then finally I thought they had left and I locked the door and they in fact burst through my screen window to escape my house. I mean, do you think I handled that wisely or not? The knee-jerk reaction for most people is to solve it themselves and some are successful and some are not. But during the spring baby season, it's best left for professionals to deal with this because if you don't deal with the whole family, you could end up locking up an adult female away from her babies and then the result is terrible damage to the house because they will be bent on doing anything to get back to their babies and they can destroy shingles, roof boards, you name it. Holy smokes, so I did the absolute wrong thing. You're being very polite to me. I should have called an expert like you. Well, thank you very much, Brad, for meeting me here today. And what are you going to do about the problem here, the animals in the attic? What's your strategy? Well, at this point, it looks like we're dealing with squirrels. So the way we deal with squirrels at this time of the year, because there are no babies, is that we'll put on a one-way door. The adult squirrels will be able to exit as they go out to forage for food. But when they return to the house, they won't be able to get back inside. We'll return in a couple of days, remove the one-way door, and permanently screen over the entry hole. The exit strategy. Exactly. Nice. Well, hey, thank you very much, Brad. It's been very interesting finding out how you contend with wildlife in people's houses. You're very welcome. That is Brad Gates. He's the owner and president of Gates Wildlife Control in Toronto, Ontario.